Whoa, 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 hold up. This is very exciting and all, but you don't know how we got here. Let me fill you in. Hello everyone, welcome. So today I'm super excited for this video. We have a package, as you can see, from Squid Industries. You know what's in this package because you saw the title and thumbnail, but I do not because I did not actually pay for this item. Today's video is actually sponsored by Squid Industries. So thank you to them for sending this to me. We're gonna open it up and see what it is today. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. Looks like we got some squid swag. Oh, check this out. Oh, nice. There's like a reflective sticker with a tsunami and then the squid with a crack racket. Very cool. And then, oh, lanyard. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. So yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you to Squid Industries for sending this, for reaching out and sponsoring. And thank you everyone to be, that is, been watching the channel because this is not, would not have been possible without you guys, without each and every one of you. And of course, Squid Industries, all of their, their links to their YouTube channel and Instagram, that'll be in the description below. So let's open this. Okay, very nice box. Oh, extra hardware. Oh, teal, I like it. Oh yeah, okay. All right, look at that. <laughs> that is, wow, squid trainer. It's so, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> very excited to flip this. Yeah, my initial thoughts, just when I'm, oh, yeah, you can hear that. The ring, wow, the, the handles feel very different. Very, yeah, the texture, the, the, the first thing I notice is just the finish on the handles. They feel incredibly grippy. Not uncomfortable, but nice and grippy. Of course, the ring, oh, yeah, such a good design. All right, okay, we're gonna have to take this over here so we can get some serious flipping. Okay, so I just moved the camera. I really have not flipped this at all, so I'm just gonna... I can't tell if it's because it, there's something on it, but it almost feels like chalky in my hands. I don't know if it's just because the texture is just so different from just the regular like aluminum. Even, wow, I gotta say, even this face, even though there's there's no no milling or anything. Oh wow, it just feels a lot, um, a lot less slippy than other balisongs that I've used, other aluminum ones. I gotta say, I am like, I'm never nervous when recording videos. This is the first time I'm like nervous. The ring is, at least right now, it is not annoying to me, but I mean, I could see how it could become annoying. Um, I mean, rings, you know, you, you either love them or you hate them. Usually, I feel like it's how it goes. I would definitely say with the ring, if you do an ice pick aerial, really like, or something where you really catch it, maybe it's shortstop. Yeah, you get the ring. Oh, yo, I just noticed that. Benjamin flips. Yeah, that's that's really dope. I didn't know that they were going <laughs> to engrave my channel name. That is so sick. That's awesome. But yeah, so... Of course, you have the Squid Industries logo on the other side. Upside down, some might say. I would be one of those people. <laughs> this is right out of the box. It's a little bit of flipping, but no tap. Yeah, it's very minimal play. And that's without, I haven't put any oil on it. Let me just do that real quick. Now it's been freshly oiled. Like I said, I'm for some reason nervous. Okay, yeah, I really, I mean, this is just like a personal thing. I really like the shape of the handles so far. And remember, this is all just my initial impressions. Oh yeah, the Chaplin's, I mean, whoa, it almost spin up off my finger, hold on. Yeah, that was that was cool. Uh, let me try that again, oh, yikes. Um, yeah, the Chaplin's feel really good. Okay, so some other things that I'm noticing is you have yeah, the double-sided screws, which they're not like flush, There's, it goes in, but they don't stick out. I like that they don't stick out. Another thing is this bite handle marker. Let's see how that feels. Whoa, yeah, okay. That is definitely noticeable, which is good. I can feel it. It is definitely uncomfortable even just touching like that and doing a chaplain that is not comfortable, which is something that I like because I don't really like when bite handle markers are barely noticeable. This is something I actually didn't really even talk about yet, but the the balance, and I have to say, I I didn't mention it yet, <laughs> the balance, because it didn't really come across my mind. Um, and I would say that's a good thing. To me, the handles don't feel heavy or sluggish or slow. 
um, nor does the blade feel like it's too heavy. And yeah, it definitely seems like the squid trainer carries the momentum between rollovers very well. No tricks that I've done on this have felt different or off, like in a bad way, honestly. If I had to sum up my impressions on this, everything just feels either the same or better. Um, and so that that is good. We'll see what happens in a week. <laughs> okay, so it's now been like three weeks since I did that first impressions. And this is, next section is gonna be a full scripted review of all my thoughts. It took a long time to figure everything out that I was thinking about this battle song and write it all down in a way that hopefully makes sense and is useful to all of you, so I hope you enjoy. It's important that I state while this trainer was provided to me for free by Squid Industries for the purpose of the review, all of the thoughts and opinions in this video are entirely my own. So I have nine topics that I'll be covering in this review. While one of those categories is flipping, most of these topics will include things that directly relate to the flipping experience. As for me, that is the whole purpose of owning Ballot Songs. I'll speak more about the price and value of the Squid Trainer at the end, but just so you can keep this in mind, for this version I have here, it is $174.99 on Squid Industries website, though that does not include any custom laser engraving. Let's start with the first thing that sticks out to me about the Squid Trainer, grip. The Squid Trainer V-Force handles have a nice milled texture on the faces, which provide for a great amount of grip on those sides. Its minimalist hole pattern and large milled line down the center also aids in grip especially during fans, rollovers, and anytime you do this type of movement where you pivot the ballet between two fingers, like the ice pick spin or the step ladder. The jimping surprised me as it's a pretty low profile. It's just barely noticeable from the front, but it does provide a great amount of grip. It's really only as pronounced as it needs to be. It also extends higher up on the handles than any of my other ballot songs, and it's equal on both sides, which is really nice. The jimping is a new addition to the version four, and I'm very glad that it was added. The jimping gives extra grip without inhibiting the spin during choker fans, and provides for a lot of control during ladders. Part of why the jimping is so effective is because of the finish of the handles, which are bead blasted. Now bead blasting is a surface finishing technique for metal, which can enhance the grip of the final product. Not all bead blast finishes are the same, however, as other ballot songs I have used, such as the Volp, which also has a bead blast finish, feels much, much more slippery. They're both bead blasted aluminum, but they feel completely different. The Squid Trainer's bead blast finish is good for grip. Even the sides of the handles that have no meld out texturing aren't as slippery as you might think. With all of my testing, I haven't had any issues with grip in this part of the handle, except one. When I was recording some B-roll of the trick The Kiss Goodbye, I had a few times that the battle song slipped a bit and tripped me up. It's right when I was holding the ballet between my two fingers like this, it slid all the way down, as you can see. It was slipping because that part lacking texture was right between the sides of my fingers. After realizing that and adjusting, it hasn't been an issue since. Also, notice how the jimping did a great job of preventing the ballot song from falling. Next, I wanna talk about the balance and the weight. As I mentioned during the unboxing and initial thoughts section, the balance of the ballot song never came to mind while I was flipping it. I only thought to mention it at the end because I was thinking over if there was anything that I missed. That's a good thing. It's a testament to how the balance profile doesn't distract from the flipping experience. The ballet does all the tricks I tried on easily. None of them seem to be held back by the balance. I will say that that perception of the balance held up throughout my time continuing to flip the script train for the most part. The only thing I would mention is that ricochets feel a bit harder to pull off as the handles carry a lot of momentum. It's especially noticeable for tricks that require multiple back-to-back -back changes in direction, such as the kiss goodbye. Part of that is due to the relatively high overall weight of the bell song, being 4.40 ounces, as it says on the website, and the steel pins at the end of the handles that increase its ability to carry momentum. Speaking of carrying momentum, the Squid Trainer does that phenomenally. Combos that focus on a fluid transfer of momentum from trick to trick feel effortless, especially when I get into a good rhythm. As I mentioned, the Squid Trainer is heavy, but it doesn't really feel heavy unless I'm doing tricks that require many abrupt changes of momentum, or if I'm just flipping sloppily. This can make flipping the squid trainer a bit more of a tiring experience at times, not only because my fingers have to work harder during ricochets, but more mental energy is required to stay focused during more flowy combos, as mistakes can take more work to get back on track due to the overall weight. Conversely, it makes getting into a good flow more rewarding as it motivates a focus on flow during each trick and combo, which could make you a better flipper in the long run. Now there's one trick that I wanna highlight, which exemplifies why the Squid Trainer doesn't feel heavy when flipping, 
which is the reverse shortstop. Lifting the bow song up with just the ring and pinky finger at the very end of the handle is not easy, but when the trick is done at full speed, the handles carry momentum so well that I find this trick to actually be easier than on some other lighter bow songs that don't carry momentum as well. Now, if you want to learn the reverse shortstop and other variations, make sure you subscribe because I'll be posting a tutorial for it very soon. The Squid Trainer is not a quiet ballot song. Most noticeably, it has a ring to it. The ring has been decreased in the version 4, which I'm very thankful for, but it is still very much there. The ringing sound comes from the blade as opposed to the handles, which means that you will hear the ring during flipping, but also when the bow song is stopped in the open and closed position. I do think it's kind of cool when I do an opening and the bow song is left ringing, kind of like drawing a sword in the movies. But maybe for that reason, it seems off to me when I close the bow song and it still rings out. Ring is very much a preference thing. Personally, I'd always rather a bow song didn't ring as the quieter a bow song is, the better to me. It's not the end of the world as you can easily put tape or an insert in the blade to stop the ring. While I do think that the ring can be kind of cool when I first pick up my squid trainer, it gets annoying very quickly, especially when I'm focusing during practice. I will definitely be doing something to silence the ring on this bow song in the future. Aside from the blade ring though, the bow song is loud. Just the intermittent clicks and clacks that the squid trainer makes during flipping is noticeably louder than on my other ballets. It's definitely more taxing to my ears and I usually either have to take a break sooner or put in some sound dampening earplugs to prevent my ears from feeling fatigued. I don't think that most people would be bothered by it as much as I am, but I'm just sensitive about sounds and I like to take extra precaution with my hearing. If you're like me and are bothered by constant loud sounds, it's something to consider when making a purchase decision. Oh, and by most people not being bothered by the sound, I mean most people flipping it. This most certainly is not the battle song to constantly flip around your family and friends because I'm sure they would get annoyed very quickly. One thing about the sound that I have noticed is it doesn't seem to be changed very much when I apply oil. I wonder if that's because the tolerances are so tight that there isn't as much empty space to fill it with oil, but I'm not really sure. Speaking of tolerances, unsurprisingly, the tolerances are very good on this trainer. Out of the box, it came with no tap and minimal play. And after three weeks of flipping, it hasn't changed, which is very nice. I mostly flip over softer surfaces, such as carpet or soft furniture, but from what I've heard, squid products hold up over time, even with more aggressive use. I haven't had to adjust the screws at all, which makes sense as Squid Industries ships their battle songs with thread locker applied after they are tuned. That means that the screws will stay in place longer, but it also means that it'll be harder to take them out initially. For me, tolerances aren't the most important thing as it doesn't really affect the flipping performance, but having very little play and no tap just makes a battle song feel that much more premium and makes for a more enjoyable handling experience. Because I haven't had any issues, I haven't taken the ballet apart and I don't plan to, which is why I won't be able to speak firsthand about the tuning or maintenance experience. I did just want to mention a couple things though. The pivots are T10, which is great, and they are also double-sided. Something else to note is that the V4 is the version that was upgraded from washers only to bushings with washers. It came with extra hardware in the box, which are the washers, pivots, and pivot screws, but no bushings. I thought they were missing at first, but after looking on Squid Industries' website, it seems that you would tune the ballast song by replacing just the washers, which generally wear out faster than bushings, and the pivots if you want to apply fresh Loctite, but you won't need to have new bushings and bother tuning those to the proper size. As for durability, I have not treated this ballast song poorly enough to really speak about how it will hold up in the long run. The handles are made of 66 to one aluminum, which isn't as durable as 7075 aluminum or titanium, of course, but it's fairly durable. It's kind of funny to say it's fairly durable as it's a strong metal and it's really durable. It's not gonna break or bend in any meaningful way that will affect flipping performance. The only thing you should have to worry about is getting small dents and scratches when you drop it, which only affects the look. The blade is made of 410 stainless steel and is heat treated to increase its hardness, which means you shouldn't have to worry about it bending. It also has a nice stonewash finish, which looks great on its own and can help disguise any minor scratches. I try to be pretty careful with my battle songs and the screen trader is no exception, but the ends of the handles already have a few dents and scratches. Most of them haven't removed the anodization though there are a couple of silvery spots shining through. Most of these I think have come from me hitting the legs of my desk, whoops. Of course that is all cosmetic damage as the tune and flipping performance is unchanged. Next, let's talk about comfort. The trainer blade has a nice crown spine. It isn't fully rounded, but the chamfers make the spine more than comfortable enough for chaplains. While I was really focusing on chaplain comfortability and comparing the squid trainer to my other battle songs, 
I was finding that it wasn't the most comfortable, but that seems to come down to the weight of the balisong as opposed to the geometry of the blade and handles. The heavier a balisong is, the more mass that will be pushing against your finger during a chaplain. And when there's a relatively thin blade spine, all of that weight in a fast chaplain is going to lend itself to be less comfortable. That being said, I wouldn't describe the chaplain experience as uncomfortable on this balisong. As I mentioned with the grip earlier, the faces of the handles are fully textured and the sides of the handles feature jimping that extends far up along them on the outside and the inside. While all that makes for a nice grip, it does mean that you will feel this grip more when flipping. Especially as I've gotten used to it, it sticks out in my mind less. But if you're someone that is more sensitive to textures, that is something to consider. For me, it's not a problem really at all as the texture is not uncomfortable and if you want an aluminum ballast song that's not slippery, you need some texture. Speaking of something you will feel while flipping, let's talk about the bite handle marker. It is unquestionably uncomfortable without being painfully punishing. It will let you know when you have messed up on a trick and it is very apparent when you do say a bite handle chaplain, but it doesn't leave a lasting pain to the point where you mess up, stop the trick, and it's still stinging for a couple of seconds. If you do really smash the bite handle marker into your finger in just the wrong spot though, it will sting. But that has only happened to me once. And if you do that, you probably deserve it. So you learn not to do it again. Now, I have been pinched a couple times between the spine of the blade and the handles, between the Zen pin nipple and the small gap in the handle, and between both of the handles right at the pivots. That last one is due to the small handle gap. A very rare pinch is a worthy price to pay for having such a nice small handle gap. As for the other two ways I've been pinched, they were also not frequent. I wouldn't say that the squid trainer is really pinchy, but I just wanted to mention that it could happen a couple different ways. Okay, quick side note about getting pinched between the handles. I was doing some kind of close like this, but where I had it really close to my hand like that, but I guess I had it like my hand squished in too much. And so it actually pinched like this part on my hand. You can actually see it right there. It left a visible mark on my skin. Um, but yeah, so just know that it can pinch you kind of bad right here between the two handles, but also I don't really care because I like small handle gaps. So, okay, bye. Next, let's talk about the design. I already mentioned many design features that fall under the previous category, but I have a couple of things to mention that didn't quite fit into those. The blade profile is simple and shares the same design language as the handles, which makes it really look like they belong together, which I like. The tip design makes it instantly apparent which side of the balisong is which when closed. And while it's a bit difficult to tell which is the bite side from the blade profile while the ballet is in full motion, I find myself looking for the bite handle indicator instead anyway. As for the design of the handles, I think they're great. The handles are a rounded square shape, which I really like. They don't feel too blocky due to the filleted edges. Side terminology note, the rounded edges are not chamfered as a chamfer is flat, but a fillet is round. Anyway, I wouldn't necessarily call the handles slim and they're not tapered, but they're definitely not chunky. They do feel substantial due not just to the geometry, but also the weight. Personally, I really like the handle design for flipping, as the shape and size feels very natural in the hand, and at no point have I wished it to be different. The only thing is, if the handles were to be slightly tapered at the top, that would allow for room to push the pivots closer together, and I wonder if that would in turn result in slightly stickier chaplains. As it is though, the chaplains are still good. Another design feature that is kind of small, but personally I greatly appreciate, is how the pivots and screws are recessed so they're not sticking up out of the handles. It's nice that they don't get in the way while flipping. Now mine actually just barely stick out on one side, but it's not noticeable while flipping, which is what is important to me. Once again, the version four added both jimping and bushings, which is a great reason to go for the version four as opposed to the 3.5 or earlier. Overall, the Squid Trainer V4 has a great design. Next up is flipping. I shared lots of things that relate to the flipping experience during the other sections, but in this section, I wanted to take some time to recap what I think is most prominent during the flipping experience. The grip is really good. And I say this not just because it feels grippy in the hand, but because I've definitely been dropping it less than I usually do. I still drop it plenty, but that's a skill issue. It's not often the squid trainer falls because it just slipped out of my hands. The balance is fantastic. It just feels really natural through every trick I throw at it. There hasn't been a single time where I thought if it was just a touch more handle bias or a touch more blade bias, then a certain trick would perform better. For that reason, I would describe the balance profile as neutral. When it comes to the overall weight, however, it's definitely heavier than what I'm used to, and there are times I have wished it was a touch lighter. It's not all the time. The weight is actually something that I do like about the Squid Trainer because it contributes to its ability to carry momentum phenomenally, 
and makes it feel unique and gives it a worthy spot in my collection. The Squid Trainer really lends itself to flipping in a very flowy style that encourages the user to prioritize efficient movements and tricks that lead into each other smoothly, as opposed to combos with fast changes in momentum and constant ricochets. It's not that I can't or won't do those types of things with this Bally. I can and I do, but I find myself working a bit harder and feeling a bit slower when it happens. Just to clarify, with ricochets being more difficult, I'm only talking about ones with my fingers driving the trick, when my whole hand is changing the momentum or I'm doing two-handed transfers or whatnot. It feels easy and it's responsive. The Chaplin performance is more than acceptable, but I can't help from feeling that I want them to be just a bit stickier and allow for circles that are a touch smaller. Overall, I've had no troubles performing all the tricks and combos that I normally do on the Squid Trainer, and I've also been able to learn some new ones with no problems. It's been very enjoyable flipping this battle song so much over the past three weeks, and while I have definitely been intentional about picking it up a lot due to preparing for this review, I would have done so anyway, and I see myself continuing to do so in the future. The final topic I wanted to cover is the price and value. And that's also going to tie into if you should buy one and my personal recommendations. A Balasong's price isn't subjective. The Squid Trainer V4 starts at $174.99 and can cost more if you wanted to add custom laser engraving or opt in for an inked blade, dual tone handles, or titanium hardware. All of those options are basically just for looks, and if you don't really care about that, you could even go for a blemished one for $157, which has some cosmetic imperfections, but still flips the same. While the price isn't subjective, what that price means to you is. For some people, almost $200 is much higher than they could see themselves ever spending on a Balasong trainer. And for others, a Balasong in that price range is barely considered mid-range. The way I view dropping 200 bucks on an item for my hobby is going to be different than how you would view it. So I can't really speak to if the Squid Trainer would be worth the money to you. Plus, as this video is sponsored by Squid Industries, they sent this Balasong to me for free, it's harder for me to really speak on the price as I didn't actually pay the money for it. Now, that does also free me from the bias of wanting to like a product more because I paid a lot of money for it. Another thing that makes it difficult to determine if a battle song is worth the money is when you think about all the other options that are available. Even if I say that this is totally worth the 175 price tag, are there cheaper things out there that you might prefer? Or maybe there's even more expensive options that are worth saving up for. I can't tell you how much you should spend on a battle song, but I don't need to you already know what you'd be willing to spend. And I can't tell you much about how the Squid Trainer fits into the larger Balasong economy, as there's so much that I haven't flipped. Having said all that, I think the Squid Trainer is priced reasonably for what you're getting. It's a great design and it's executed well. It's designed, manufactured, and made in the USA by a company that has had such a huge impact on the flipping hobby and continues to innovate in this space. And it's backed by their limited lifetime warranty. This could easily be your first and last high quality Balasong trainer. I mean, good luck with resisting the urge to buy another Balasong, but what I'm saying is that there's nothing really lacking in the flipping experience of the Squid Trainer before. Now, something that you have to keep in mind is that with Balasongs, similar to any other hobby that is skill-based, the Balasong is a tool. For some, it is a means to an end. They just want to use the Balasong that best fits their preferences to get really good at flipping. For others, they enjoy the experience of flipping different Balasongs as each one is unique. Of course, you will probably find yourself somewhere between those two ends, but either way, the law of diminishing returns is real. Don't just assume that because something is more expensive that it is better. Know that you're not going to be able to suddenly do more advanced tricks when you get a high quality Balasong. Though, if you're currently working with something that's really fighting against you, it could make it easier to learn on, and it will make putting in the work a more enjoyable experience. The Squid Trainer does have some features that could make you really not like it as much as other ballot songs, but you could say that about any ballot song. And it also has features that could make it your favorite. There are other good options out there for much less and for more. And what really it comes down to is preference. Really, what I'm getting at is this. If you've tried a lot of ballot songs and you know what you like and don't like, you should pretty much already be able to tell if you'd like the Squid Trainer based on all the things I've shared in my review. If you haven't flipped many Balasongs, hopefully the information in my review is helpful, but I totally understand what it's like to lack the hands-on experience and really know what you prefer. If that's you, what I would recommend is this, and this really goes for any Balasong that passes the test of most people saying it's flippable. Don't worry about the terms, features, and specs that you don't quite understand yet or aren't sure about. Buy what's in your price range and get something that looks cool to you and you'd want to pick up and flip. One last caveat to that is, the more people describe a battle song as being a standard flipping experience, the more likely you will really enjoy it overall. If a battle song flips very uniquely or has some design features that are out of the ordinary, it's more likely that you'll think it's weird and not enjoy it as much. 
That being said, and I felt this way when I first flipped this grid trainer, and I'm even more confident now, this is a good flipping experience, and it feels like what I would imagine a straightforward balisong would be like. Now, it's got a little bit of character. As you heard in the rest of the review, there are some small things that stand out, and they could be pros or cons, depending on your preferences. But especially if you haven't flipped as many balisongs overall, I think you would probably just think, wow, this is a good balisong. Ultimately, if the Squid Trainer is a balisong that closely aligns with your preferences, whether as the balisong you want to main and train on, or the next balisong that adds something unique to your collection, you're gonna love it. Unfortunately, I don't think you can truly know how much you'd like it until you flip it. But I hope I've been able to share enough about my hands-on experience for you to be able to make an informed decision. And if you still have any questions, please leave them in a comment and I will do my best to answer them. In case you're wondering what other balisongs I flipped as reference, I'll leave a link to my full 2023 collection video in the description. But if you want to see the Squid Trainer in action and learn a cool combo finisher, then check out this video tutorial next.